Here we are again. You are listening to the 49th episode of the Organizational Excellence Podcast. This is Kevin Johnson from Leverage Consulting, and today we're going to talk about leading with attitude. If I sound a little nasally today, it's because I'm getting over a cold. That's what you get for going away on vacation and having fun. But today, as I said, we'll talk about leading with attitude, and I believe it's really an underutilized tool. Leading with attitude is something that requires restraint, thought, and more. And I think sometimes when we hear the word attitude, we think attitude as being something that's bad. And as some who have been out to dinner with me know, that I thoroughly enjoy servers at restaurants that have a little attitude because they make it fun, they make it interesting, it's engaging. It's not just like going to a deli counter and ordering up a sandwich and paying for it at the end and please leave because we want to wait on the next customer. I like going to a restaurant that has uh, waiters and waitresses with attitude. They add a little something to things, but they just make the meal more fun, more engaging. And for those of you who do work with a team, you have a team that reports to you, you're within the team, you have vendors, all of us have customers, we all lead other people in some way, shape, or form. It might be me leading the wait staff in how they're going to help me this evening as being the server for my table that evening. It might be you leading your team. So sometimes the the leading with attitude comes into play, and it sounds like a very cool, very novel concept. Sounds like it should be very straightforward. Where it really comes into play is when we're dealing with something that's not a straightforward topic, when we're dealing with something that's maybe a little bit of a stretch. We're dealing with something that maybe has been a problem in the past, and it continues to be a problem, and or it's something that we already know the right answer to. I know the correct answer to this problem. However, maybe the majority of the group that I work with doesn't get it. They see nothing but problem, and I see nothing but solution. Or it could be flip-flopped. It could be something where the, the entire rest of the group sees a great solution, but maybe they're not seeing the rest of the problems that would arise from moving forward. So where this really comes into play is when... Again, we have a new concept or an old concept. We want to get forward traction. We want to get things moving forward. And we have a difference in opinion on things that leading with attitude has to do with, and you've heard in podcasts in the past where I talk about our communication skills. You know, there is the words that come out of our mouth, there's the use of our voice, and then there's our body language. So when you're talking about a new topic, and let's just say, let's use a couple scenarios here. We're sharing a new topic with the rest of the team, and we start getting eye rolls from the rest of the team. Now, some of those eye rolls might be not that they're eye rolling at you in thought of they're not interested in the new system or the new way of doing things. They might be eye rolling knowing that they want to do it, but maybe they know there's this one person who won't make it happen. Sometimes leading with attitude is reading some of this and drawing it out. Some of this is managing our own reactions. So when we see those eye rolls, how do we react to that? And again, let's go back to the words that come out of our mouth. It's how we use our voice and our body language. So when we see the eye roll, is it something where we change what we're saying? Are we saying the right words, but maybe the tone that's coming across is not so good? Or is it our body language? Do we get stiff? Do we get annoyed? Do we roll our eyes? Leading with attitude, positivity, is something that does require skill. It does require practice. It's something that when, I think the more you're put in the position, the more you accept that position of being in a, in a little bit of a tough spot and helping people get through it, the better you'll get. For those of you who are problem solvers, and if there's one person in particular that I know that... I don't even think the word no registers in their brain. They don't hear it. They don't see it. It just flies right past them. And it's funny to watch because when they know that something needs to happen, they don't see it. And they keep smiling. They keep talking. They keep doing their thing. And they do get a lot of really great traction. And then you can observe someone else 
And as soon as they hit the first teeny tiny little obstacle, and it may just be someone trying to think and process, they get quiet. And the other party is thinking and processing, they get quiet. And the immediate reaction physically is that, oh, they're not going to do it. So I'm just not going to bother anymore. So that leading with attitude is not just with the initial rollout of the new idea or the old idea that needs to be implemented consistently, but sometimes it's once you hit a little bit of resistance or the perception of resistance. That's where the real magic comes into play because most anyone can lead with good attitude going into something. It's when either you already know going into it that there's going to be resistance or you perceive it, that's when the real magic comes into play. So practice and think really hard about, again, the words that come out of your mouth, but more importantly, the tone, because sometimes we don't hear it. Those of us who have had any kind of work relationship, customer relationship, or personal relationship, I am pretty sure any one of us have been told it was your tone. So you may think again about the words that are said, how you're using your voice, and really, really thinking about your body language because those last two pieces are probably the most critical when it comes to leading with attitude. There was your 49th podcast, and I've got another really cool one teed up for the 50th, and I look forward to talking to you again soon.